Tonight, on Border Security International. One of the things that gets assessed is your medical admissibility. Looks like they stuffed it and then they restitched it again. I'm going to ask you again, what are you doing in Canada? He's coming here to work. Studying. Officers use a casual conversation method as a strategic tool. Family reunion? Where'd you go stay? Why you guys were there? If a visitor is vague about their travel plans, officers dig deeper. When do you have to go back to work? At Vancouver International, this American IT consultant says he's on his way to meet a friend in Toronto. What's your relationship? Are you just co-workers? Like, what's the... What are you, friends. Are you boyfriend, girlfriend? No, just no. friends. What's her name again? Uh, Linda. How often, uh... Has she come down to the States to visit you? Um, you know, I think we... We've been talking a couple of times, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really, I think, uh, one main time that she came down mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months ago, so... Was that for work or was that for pleasure? Um, it was for work. Is this your personal computer or work? It's my work computer. Mm -hmm. you know. Why are you bringing it with you? Um, you know, they always want me somewhere within reach, so... You, you said you wanted to come visit Toronto, right? Right. But I asked you what you're going to be doing here. You have no idea what you're going to be doing? Uh, at least for tomorrow, once I get rested up, just hang out a little bit by the waterfront and kind of take it easy from there. Can I get Linda's uh, contact details? Oh, sure, I have her number. Yeah, that'd be that perfect. perfect. Officer Jeff wants to call the traveler's friend to see if their stories match up. OK, just hang tight, OK? Sure. If they match up, then usually it's legitimate reasons why they're here. Hi there, I'm looking for a Linda. You, do you know anyone named Linda? Are you expecting anyone to enter Canada? All right, I think um, it's not the same person we're looking for here. Are you, so you're in Seattle right now? All right, sorry to uh, bother you, but thanks for your help. Okay, bye. You gave me a Seattle number for Jason. What's he doing? That's an enemy game. Yeah. Primary for the uh, radio for opening grade. Officers are trained to detect threats of all kinds in an effort to protect Canada's border. Hi there. Where are you headed today? I am going to try and seek assistance with the smaller consulate. Okay. The best bet is to go to the nearest one, which is here. How are you a Slovakian national? I no, see I'm an American in... citizen. Okay, you're an American citizen. I had a stolen green card because I was married to a Slovak national. Okay. And are you still married, sir? I am not sure at this point. Has she filed divorce proceedings against you? Yes. Like... I don't know why. First of all, why she did. Okay. The traveler wants the consulate's help with his marriage problems, but he needs immediate medical help as well. To see a doctor here to see if they can take on the responsibility of my pain management for the next several weeks. What's going on medically right now? I have broken spine, torn meniscus, and tendon in my left knee. Five herniated disc in my neck with nerve impingement. Okay. And um, I take medication, all prescribed. What medications um, do you take, sir? I take Neurontin. What is that for? That's for nerve damage. Okay. Oxycodone for mm -hmm. pain, Valium, Tizanidine. Okay. I have a whole list. There may be strain coming onto the medical system if he's seeing doctors and starting to maybe seek treatment while in Canada. Are you med compliant, sir? Do you take them regularly? Yes. Okay. When was the last dosage that you took? This morning. Okay. I have one dose left, and which is the reason that it's kind of an emergency. This young surfer has just returned from a holiday in Southeast Asia, a common source of drugs. We've uh, referred him for a secondary examination based on his routing and uh, the length of time he was away. He has some items in his possession that usually backpackers on long-term holidays don't have. So where all have you been in the last 10 months? Thailand, Malaysia for a visa run. China? Well, it was a large wooden crate, so I want to have a look at that. A lot of surfing in China? A little bit. We look at behavior in general, fidgeting, uh, their language, general demeanor. We also look at the way they behave with their bags. Can I start unpacking? No, no. Sorry. It's one at a time. Is there any meat in here? Actually, I think there's chicken feet. 
chicken feet. You didn't uh, declare food here. You got to declare your chicken feet. Oh, really? Yeah. Those uh, can't be brought into Canada. It's an $800 penalty for bringing undeclared meat into Canada. He doesn't seem happy, that's for sure. So it could be that no one wants to be examined, or he could be nervous about what's in the wooden crate. I don't know. At Vancouver's mail centre, officers screen tens of thousands of parcels every day. We see a lot of heroin, particularly coming through this port, a lot of pornography that shouldn't be coming through, and we see a lot of prohibited weapons components. And it's up to the officers to be as creative at finding the stuff as individuals are at hiding it, especially with parcels from high-risk countries. What we look for is inconsistencies in the x-rays to see if it's declared as is what it looks like for us. For this specific package, what I saw was something that looked like vials. Where is this coming from? This is coming from Thailand. And it's declared as toys for eBay. It's testosterone. Looks like they unstitched it, they stuffed it with their item, and then they Restitched it again. They had put in extra teddy bears to make it look like it's an actual legitimate gift and then just shipped it. There's more testosterone. It's the steroid, and uh, you need a permit or a license from Health Canada to actually bring it in. Uh, however, this person is trying to bring it in without any of those documents. It just goes to show to what extent somebody will go to, to actually send somebody something into Canada. Downstairs, Officer Kelly has found another suspicious package, also declared as toys, from a different sender. Let's load it and have a look. Coming from China, and it looks like it's going to Scarborough. Looks like the capacitor is running up each one here. They're on their side. Definitely there's something dense in there. OK. That's what I thought. So why don't we go ahead and open it then? Definitely. Detector dogs are invaluable when contraband is concealed. Up. Get up there. At Vancouver International Airport, Detector Dog Nova has led officers to a traveller from the US. What do you do for work? I'm a medical cannabis grower in California. How long have you been that for? Oh, 25 years. The traveller claims he's here to discuss a business project with some Canadian marijuana growers he met online. What kind of project are you talking about here? breeding project for seed company. So do you have any seeds with you today? No, absolutely not. I, I, no, I'm not. 100%? 100%. Uh, you seem very nervous to me. Is there something you're worried about, or? Well, I'm worried about not getting it. <laughs> like, let's say you grew hot and you're around it 24-7, and you smelled like it and this and that. It'd be, like, so easy to have, like, a roach in your pocket or something. Hi, guys. Good. Where are you guys from? At the land border, an American citizen says his primary purpose for entering Canada is to visit the Slovak consulate. I had a Slovak ring card because I was married to a Slovak national. OK. But his real priority may be to visit a Canadian doctor. I have broken spine, torn meniscus, and tendon in my left knee. Five herniated discs in my neck with nerve impingement. OK. Do you have out-of-country medical insurance, sir? I have no medical insurance at okay. all. OK. So how much currency money are you traveling with? $1,420. OK. And where is your cash right now? In my wallet. So do you have any other money, like, in the bank, or this is sort of no, all the No, I have a bank right account, now? but it's at zero balance right now. OK. And have they prescribed marijuana to you or anything like no, that for pain management? absolutely not. Any other narcotics? Just my pain medications are in the car. He's got no out-of-country medical insurance? Yeah. He's only got 3400 in yeah. cash on him. That's yeah, it. like, if he winds up in the hospital, that's a huge bill. I don't know. We'll go have a look at the car, see what's okay. out there. Next, please. You said you wanted to come visit Toronto, right? But I asked you what you're going to be doing here. You have no idea what you're going to be doing here. At the airport, this American consultant claims he's arrived to visit a friend called Linda. Secondly, the number you gave me for Linda, 
It doesn't work. Some, some guy named Jason picks it up or something. Why would you give me a Seattle number for Linda? I actually didn't know. Um, I, it might have been... Listen, you're from the Washington area. Yeah. You know the area codes in the Washington area. Do you know all the area codes in the Vancouver area? Uh, in, in the Vancouver area? Yes, I do. OK. I'm going to ask you again. What are you doing in Canada? I am here on a personal trip. Officer Jeff isn't convinced. So he and Officer Diana examine the traveler's electronic devices. Well, Wilson specifically, he will not be available next week at all, as he is at another client's physical location. He's coming here to work. Yeah, he is. Uh, we're going to talk to him a little more and just um, see what he has to say about email threads between his supervisor and himself. That on-site situation isn't related to what I'm doing this particular week. I mean, there are things that are on my calendar. It's just about the rest of the team, what's happening with the rest of the company, and things that I might have been work had worked with in the, in the past, and they just want to keep me in the loop. You're telling me everything about these emails and in your Outlook calendar is all coincidence, right? This traveler, returning from a long trip to Asia, has brought back some unusual luggage. He has some items in his possession that usually backpackers on long-term holidays don't have, especially that wooden box. What's in it? Uh, I have a sink. Watch your eyes. Why are you sink? bringing a sink? <laughs> Random events. It seems odd that someone's going to travel for 10 months, and the souvenir they're bringing back is a sink. This is all just the sink? Yeah, that's just sink. OK. I'm going to look for anomalies inside the wood itself. I'm going to look for any organic matter, because this is going to be uh, metal or porcelain. So anything extra will show up quite quickly on the image. At the Vancouver Mail Center. What are they declared as? A toy? The declaration on a package from China doesn't match the x-ray. Definitely, there's something dense in there. So why don't we go ahead and open it then? It's hard to get into these parcels sometimes because of the tape that they use. Officers need to open the package carefully in case the police decide to carry out a controlled delivery to arrest the importer. There we go. OK. It's a high-powered stun gun in a cell phone format. Unfortunately, we are seeing them coming in more often than we'd like to. We do have a light, which shows that it's active. And we have confirmation. And it's a prohibited device entering into Canada, so we want to make sure that we get these off the street. I'll run checks on both the importer and exporter, uh, find out if there's been an, any previous enforcement action. Um, if there is, that certainly adds to the evidence that we're compiling against the importer here. It will be uh, forwarded to our investigation team as well as our intelligence. They'll make contact with law enforcement agencies in the Scarborough area and see if they'd like to pick that up. At the land border, an American has some serious health issues. It's kind of an emergency. He wants to see a Canadian doctor, but has no medical insurance. If he winds up in the hospital, that's a huge bill. I don't know, we'll go have a look at the car, see what's okay. out there. I don't doubt he's in a lot of pain. Are most of them empty? Most half of them are empty. He's doing things properly by at least carrying it in the bottles that belong to him. Yeah, all the pills are uh, his. Are they all in his name? Right. Yep. That part of it's not an issue, but uh, yeah, that kind of goes behind why the medical side of things is definitely a concern. You seem very nervous to me. Is there something you're worried about? Or? Officers worry this American medical marijuana grower may be hiding something. I'm seriously not up to anything illegal here. He's coming to visit a friend who we met through the internet. They both grow seeds and grow marijuana plants. You never had marijuana in this bag at all? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's been marijuana in there at some point. But... What's your buddy's name? Charles. You have a nickname for him? Huh? Oh, Reef. Yeah. 
I'm gonna call his friend and see what he tells me about what their plan to do in Canada is and see if their stories match. Hi, this is Ken Immigration calling. Good, how are you doing? Yeah, he's under examination right now. I mentioned you guys, are, he's coming here to discuss some business opportunities with you. So is this not a business trip, it's just a trip for you guys? Well, sir, I'm doing my job. As an immigration officer, this is what I do. Okay, well, that's your opinion, right? And Charles just hung up the phone on me. He thought my questions were too invasive. At Vancouver International Airport, this American IT consultant is sticking to his story. I'm going to ask you again, what are you doing in Canada? I am here on a personal trip. But his emails indicate he's coming to work without a permit. You're telling me everything about these emails and in your Outlook calendar is all coincidence, right? I'm not it saying it's all, all coincidence. Well, right now, I think it, it, it's, it is weird in terms of how it kind of adds up that's here. Yeah, exactly. But it, what I will po point out and say is there were dates that were, of course, talked about. They didn't happen. And the work email stating he's coming to work during the week, the inconsistencies in the stories. He can't tell me what he's going to be doing in uh, Toronto for the week he's going to be here. Um, he can't even give me the contact details for his reception in Toronto. So all these things add up and make me believe that he is coming for other purposes than vacation. I think you're coming to work, OK? My decision is we're not going to let you into Canada today. Quite frankly, at this point, I'm too frustrated to even probably enjoy this week at all. So I think I'm just going to go back. So would you choose to voluntarily withdraw your application under Canada? Uh, yes, for today. So I'll get you to sign there. Can you read it over? I'll give you a copy as well. If he's coming for work in the future, admit, first of all, you gotta admit you're coming for work. He has to bring the right documentation so we can look at the documentation and decide if he can get a work permit. A nervous traveler returning from a 10-month holiday in Southeast Asia is about to have his luggage x-rayed. He could be nervous about what's in the wooden crate. This is all just the sink. Yeah, that's just sink. Okay. He's got a kite sail in the one on top. It's a uh, large organic matter, and it's consistent with other sporting equipment I've seen in the past. These are the two sinks. There's no voids, so in my opinion, there's nothing hidden inside it. There's no real anomalies. It's just a sink, a kite, and some equipment. What's the sink for? I gotta ask. <laughs> is it that much cheaper? Not really. Okay, okay. So you can't bring the chicken in. I'm gonna do up a receipt for you. We're not gonna fine you, but for next time, remember that you gotta declare all your food. He has no contraband, nothing like that. Looks like he's just bringing back a sink for his new house. Yeah, just in Vancouver. This American marijuana grower says he's here for a legitimate business meeting with some Canadian seed suppliers. So do you have any seeds with you today? Any no, other? absolutely not. I, I, no. But when Officer Sean calls the person he's supposed to meet... And Charles just hung up the phone on me. Let's go back up to the counter here. Right now, his friends are being very compliant. They didn't want to answer any of my questions. So they're not credible reception at this time. Now, is there any reason why your, your friends wouldn't be very cooperative? I never met the guy. So here you have this new guy come and meet him, all this bull with customs and stuff. And over what? I don't have anything. I, f I smell like weed. As right now, the reception is not credible. They don't want to talk to me. They hang up on me. Uh, what you're coming to do is subjective as to right now. Say business, but this can be done from the US, right? I also have reason to believe you're coming to buy seeds. Exporting marijuana seeds is illegal. I've come to the conclusion that you're inadmissible to Canada. I seem to have wasted everybody's time today, so no need to waste any more time on me.
This traveller has some serious medical issues and a box of prescription pills to prove it. All the controlled substances are prescribed to him. He's come to Canada to seek medical help. We've taken a look at your whole case here, basically all the circumstances and everything, OK? One of the things that gets assessed when you're coming into a foreign country is your medical admissibility. Based on the health issues that you're going through right now, we feel that you might pose a burden to the Canadian health system. We cannot afford to have foreign nationals come into the country have something happen to them where maybe it's undue, maybe it's unexpected, but that they come in and they wind up in the hospital with, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of medical treatment that they cannot afford to pay for. I understand that. We have millions of them yeah. south of this border. I'm not right. trying to do that. We're not saying no, but what we're saying is that you would have to see a designated medical practitioner, okay? I've actually printed off the two that exist in Washington State. They're both in Seattle. If you see one of them and they give you the clear that you're not going to cause any kind of undue effect medically in Canada, then you're going to be okay to come in. He's a pretty motivated individual. He does what's asked of him and he's trying to do the right thing. I strongly suspect that we'll see him in a couple days and he'll have had his medicals done. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck to Good you luck. with everything. If his medicals say that he's clear, then honestly, I don't think there's really any issue with him coming up as long as a doctor signs off on it.